Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video. In this video, I have five anti-patterns for Android for you. So an anti-pattern is basically the opposite of a design pattern. So just a pattern, just a solution people typically use for their problems, that is totally wrong. Don't do that. Don't use what I show you here. And in case that you use these patterns that I show you here, I will also show you how you can actually avoid using these and actually solve these specific problems in a much better way. Number one are base classes. I see that all the time that people use base classes and I have used these myself in the past so much because I thought they are actually helpful. They help you to um, remove duplicate code. Yes, they do help you to remove duplicate code, but they are not that good. Let's take a look at this main activity here. You can see it inherits from a base activity. And now I want you to tell me what's the purpose of base activity? Can you tell me that? What does it do? Which functions does it bring? Well, you don't know, because you can't know. It's called base activity. Let's say you just look into another project and you are actually trying to understand what it does. And then you just see that base activity. With that class name, you have no idea what that actually does. Because usually you name your classes in a way that actually tells you what they do. The name base activity is not really clear. You have no idea what's in there. So if we take a look here in our base activity, and you can see that just contains a function to show a toast. And yeah, because it's a base activity and our main activity inherits from that, we can now simply call the show toast function here with a message. Uh, oops, hello world. And sure, this, this is cool. This eliminates a lot of duplicate code. You don't always need to write toast.make text and that stuff, but you don't want to put this in a base activity. Another disadvantage of base activities is that they create a very, very strong coupling between your base activity and all your other activities that inherit from that base activity. So what that means is, if you go to your base activity and you change this function, that means you change the code in all your activities because you can't really distinguish that you um, that you say, okay, I only want to make this change for my um, register and login activity. I only make, want to make this for my chat activity. No, if you change this, it will apply to all activities in your whole project and you really want to avoid such a strong coupling. So let's actually see how we can solve this. How can we still eliminate the duplicate code that we have this toast text here all the time? And this is just an example. Um, this is still very quick to write, but people often use base activities to put in a lot of code, a lot more than this here. Um, but in that case, what you can simply do is you take this code and simply make that an extension function in Kotlin. So just say function activity that show toast pass in the message and paste this text. And then you just take this and throw it in the thrash can. You go back to a main activity, replace this with the normal good old app combat activity, and there you go. You can use it just the way as before, but you're not forcing your activity to actually have this function. And if you want some other activities to use another function, for example, to show a short toast, then you can just create an overload for that and then use the overloaded version of that. And that's just much cleaner in your code that you just have a file for some activity extension functions than just having a file for base activity in which you put all the code that your activities actually share. And let's get to anti-pattern number two, and that is putting all your dependencies into one huge app module. I see that all the time. Well, I don't have any dependencies in here, but I see that all the time that people just create one app module, singleton component, everything is a singleton in there, and they just put in everything here. Seriously, don't do that. We have these modules to actually have multiple of these to, to just separate our dependencies. We don't need every de dependency throughout the whole lifetime of our application. Not every dependency needs to be a singleton. You can create other modules for activities, for views, for fragments. Use that, do that. That's not only better in terms of memory efficiency and memory management, but also that it's just much clearer which module actually contains which dependencies. And also if you have multiple singletons, it can make sense to create multiple modules for that. You don't need to put all your singletons in app module. Another disadvantage if you use one big module is that it's, it's much harder to actually use that module for testing. Because if you have ever written test cases with Dagger Hilt, for example, 
then this looks for example like this. So we just have our field and our test annotation here and then we can just inject dependencies in here with this annotation. Well, and which dependencies will this then use? It will use the dependencies it can find in our modules. So in this case from our app module. But what actually if you need specific test dependencies? So dependencies that are only for your test cases. Well, if you actually want that Dagger uses these test dependencies instead of these dependencies from your actual app module, what you need to do is you need to annotate this with uninstall modules and you pass the app module. So this will just say, okay, we uninstall the app module and then it will take a look at other modules if it can find the dependencies. So then you will just have a test app module in your test directory. But maybe you only want to actually uninstall some dependencies of your app module. That's not possible. With this annotation you just delete all these dependencies for this test class. Um, so you, you can't inject any of these anymore. If you have different modules and you just separate your dependencies between different modules, you can just you have a much more fine-grained control which modules you actually uninstall here and which you actually like to keep. Anti-pattern number three is using an activity for every screen. I see that all the time that people do that. You can see I have an activities package here and literally for everything I have an activity in there. We have login, registration, profile, gender, forgot password activity, chat activity, birthday activity, so many activities. You don't need that. Android has the concept of fragments. So these are basically just portions of a screen, portions of an activity, but you can also just use fragments to display a layout for your whole screen. That's how they are supposed to be used. The reason why you want to use fragments is because they are just much, much lighter than activities. Activities are very heavy. You know, you need to send an intent to actually launch them. Um, the, the transition usually takes a little bit longer. Fragments are basically just layout containers or layouts that can be replaced in such a container. So there's just a container, hey, in, in, in this area of this screen, we can have a fragment and it can just say, okay, now I show this fragment, you click on a button, and then it just replaces the content of this container with another fragment. So that is how you actually navigate with fragments without changing the activity. Oftentimes just using a single activity for your whole app is enough. Um, I usually like to create one activity per um, entry point and per main component of my app basically. So if you take a look at these here, then I would um, take these two, make this an auth activity, that contains a login and a register fragment. I would take actually this as well, um, the forget password thing. Then I would take the birth date and gender activity, which um, I would also make fragments and put into an onboarding activity and the chat activity and yeah, that's it and, and other other screens. I would then maybe make a main activity. So for all main, co main components. Then let's get to anti pattern number four. And that is in our view model which is hard coding dispatchers. So you can see we have a shared flow here, we have a long running task, and yeah, that just uses the default dispatcher, which is totally the right thing for long running tasks that are just very CPU heavy. You can see it just delays the routine and then it's a finished string in our shared flow. Doesn't make any sense here, not important, but I don't recommend actually doing this, actually hard coding the dispatcher here you force this routine to use the default dispatcher. And let's say you do that even more often here in this in this view model with more long running tasks. And at some point you realize, okay, maybe I should I should use another dispatcher. Maybe I need some IO operation or whatever. Then you need to go through it manually and replace every single dispatcher. But that's rather the, the minor issue of that. The bigger issue is if you want to test that. For test cases, if you don't want to test routines, we have a special test coroutine dispatcher. So if you want to test your, your view model, what you, what you actually always want to do, because that is what you use to actually um, r run your unit tests in. If you want to do that, then you actually want that the coroutines in the, in the view model use this test dispatcher you have full control of in your test cases. If this uses the default dispatcher, then you don't really have the control you want. So how can we solve this problem now? The answer is by simply injecting these dispatchers. Um, and because that might not be clear right now, I want to show you an example here. What I usually do is I will go here and say interface, so you put that in a separate file, but 
for simplicity, I'll just put it in the main view model. Interface dispatcher provider. And in here, we just define the different dispatchers we have. So that is main, of type crew routine dispatcher. We have IO, and default, and unconfined. So IO, default, unconfined. And then we take such an interface and actually inject it here in our view model. So we say private val dispatches of type dispatcher provider. And instead of this, we now say dispatches dot default. So this now looks very similar. How does that actually solve our problem? So let's actually create an implementation of this interface. So we say class standard dispatches, for example, and that just implements that interface. Then we just have our four dispatchers we need to override here. For the main one, we say dispatchers.main, dispatchers.io, default, and finally unconfined. So now we can actually take this standard dispatchers object, provide it here in our app module, and or in whichever module we want to provide that. So uh, let's say singleton at provides. We say that provide dispatcher provider. And in here we obviously return such a dispatcher provider interface. And we just create our standard dispatches like this. Oh, come on, <laughs> like this. So now this will work as before. We create our standard dispatches here, which is our implementation that will be injected for our normal app into our view model here for that. And then with that, we just use the default dispatcher here, which refers to the actual default dispatcher. But what we can now do is for our test cases where we actually want test dispatchers for every coroutine, we can create another implementation of that interface, which I would normally do in the in the test package, of, of course. But yeah, just for simplicity and clarity, I'll do it here. So test dispatchers, for example, that also implements this patcher provider. And here we can say main is our test uh, coroutine dispatcher, which I don't have the dependency for. But there is an object that looks like that. And we just do that for every single dispatcher. So for every dispatcher, we just return the same test coroutine dispatcher. So default and finally unconfined. So for our test cases, we can then have a module. We can uninstall this app module so it doesn't use the standard dispatches and instead uses this test dispatches. So when we create a view model in our test package and it uses the test module, it will also inject this test dispatches dispatcher provider. And no matter which dispatcher from that we actually want to use, it will always make sure that we use the test routine dispatcher for our test cases. So this will, for our test cases, just refer to the test routine dispatcher. And that is a much cleaner solution here, especially if you have really big projects and you need that testability, which you usually want to have. And let's actually get to the last anti-pattern, anti-pattern number five, that is also related to coroutines. And I have an example here in main activity. Let's I'll revert this like this and also make this app compat activity again. So we just inject our view model here. We get an instance of that. And then we use global stop to launch and we just collect our shared flow that we have in our view model. So far, so good. But you can already see that we get a warning. Global scope will always give you that warning unless you annotate this with delicate coroutines API, which you don't want to do. I mean, if you use global scope, you want to do that, but you shouldn't actually use global scope in Android or at least be very careful with it and fully know what you're actually doing. But the reason why people like to use global scope so much is because it's just the easiest way to launch a coroutine, but it's definitely not the best way to launch a coroutine in Android. So what does global scope actually do? Global scope limits the lifetime of this coroutine to the lifetime of our actual application of the process. But since in Android we deal with life cycles a lot, so for example, the life cycle of this activity, 
what would happen here is, if this activity gets destroyed, this global scope does not get destroyed and the crew in it does not get cancelled. This crew routine will run as long as it needs until it finishes or gets cancelled um, in some other way. But well, what can happen here is main activity gets destroyed, global scope will persist and global scope will use resources of this main activity in it and because of that the garbage collector won't actually collect these resources from main activity as trash because they are not used anymore if the activity is destroyed. The garbage collector won't collect that because they are still used in global scope and that is what we call a memory leak. So this is very very vulnerable here to memory leaks in Android. And there are actually super easy fixes for that. And that is just using the typical curtain scopes that there actually exist for Android. For activities that is lifecycle scope and that will automatically cancel this curtain if the lifecycle of this component here, in this case the activity, actually gets to the on destroy state. If we have a view model then we use view model scope as here and if you have any other type of component for example a service then you need to write your own curtain scope and just manually um, cancel the curtain of that scope when your service gets to the undestroyed state or whatever kind of component you deal with. But that was it for this video for five anti-patterns in Android. I hope you don't do these and if you do these I hope you now know why you shouldn't do these anymore and how you can fix that in your projects. And by the way if you like my videos then you can now become a channel member down here on this join button. There you will get an option at least for tier 2 that you receive all my live stream recordings from Twitch. So if you miss these recordings where I just really build an app live and you can also see me struggle, see me fix my problems and stuff like that. If you want to see these and if you don't want to miss these live streams click on join and for $4.99 a month you can actually become a channel member and also help to actually support this channel so I can keep maintaining that. Thanks for watching and I wish you an awesome day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.